All right, so another crazy night of CCO action is in the books. And yes, we will get to this game between the Portland Timbers versus Club America because not only the fact that this game basically went peak CONCACAF Champions League level, but I think it probably even gone beyond that. And this was probably the craziest game I've seen so far this season in CCO. Even crazier than what we saw a couple of weeks ago in that round of 16 matchup between Atlanta United and Alahulunse. But before we actually get to this game, let's talk about the first game of tonight, which was the Columbus Crew versus Monterey. And if you're a Crew fan, this has to be a very infuriating resort because, you know, they basically were by far the better team in this game. And in some way, they kind of got Atlanta United in this game because of how many chances that they had and how many of them they wait wasted that opportunity. But at least the good news for Columbus is, is that, you know, they didn't really go full, fully Atlanta United where they had a bunch of chances in this game and were by far the better team and didn't score a goal and then finding themselves 3-0 down heading into the second leg. Well, at least Columbus did score two goals in this game but and was able to salvage a 2-2 draw. But in many ways, Riotos is still going to have the advantage with the two away goals. And those two away goals that they gave up, yeah, those ones were very, very preventable one and one that... You know, we'll see whether or not if that's going to haunt, haunt Columbus heading into the second leg. But in the first half and five minutes into this game, uh, Riotos, you know, they were clearly really wasting time and were faking injury because, you know, that's what Liga MX team is going to do whenever they play away. They're going to try to milk as much clock as possible. And in general, that's what CONCACAP kind of team does because, you know, it doesn't ma matter if we're at minute one or minute 85. Uh, teams are going to start started to waste time against an MLS team. And then I've also seen times where MLS team is starting to kind of catch up to that ability where when you're in this competition, you got to make sure you, you have to start faking injuries and start wait, wasting time and go through that, that pure CONCACAP Champions League kind of experience. But unfortunately for the crew, it was a it actually was a terrible start for them. As in the seven minute, uh, Loba would score from from Gonzalez to make it one nothing in favor of Riados, and I believe it was Affle the one that that actually, or or no, it wasn't Affle, but Keita the one that actually slipped on the ground. Uh, it was raining during the beginning part of this game, and I think think Keita kind of slipped on that that wet, wet turf, and that basically allowed Lo Loba to have have a a good chance to strike that one in, which he was able to do. And Riados were off to a great start in this game with a one nothing lead. Uh, Diaz did had a chance to tie the game up, but he of course shoot one just wide. Uh, this was a relatively rough game for Luis Diaz, where I think for for most part of this game he he just didn't look like his his old self. And you know a lot of crew fan was demanding then Caleb Porter to sub him him out of this game, and eventually he did, but it didn't came until the latter part of this match. Uh, Riados they were looking very good early in this game, and I thought Columbus they definitely looked like they were rattle in in the early part of this game and especially after they gave up that first goal but the crew did start to kind of get back into this game and then in the 20th minute we also saw another classic CONCACAF moment when they show Caleb Porter trying to figure out his tactics with a checker piece I mean I've seen a lot of coaches when they try to figure out the tactics of the game and I've seen a lot of crazy things before but I don't think I've ever seen a, a situation where a coach tried to figure out his tactics by using these kind, kind of chess piece uh, and trying to kind of play it out I mean that seems seems kind, kind of very bizarre but hey this is the CONCACAF Champions League anything goes goes is exactly what will happen in this game and I bet bet you know probably probably you know on Monday when uh, MLS Reddit does have their annual meme, meme Monday kind, kind of thing I have a feeling somebody's going to put a meme about how Caleb Porter is trying to to be playing a board game while not realizing that his team is already down down one one nothing and that they need to get a goal go back if they want to have any chance heading into the second leg. But, you know, Columbus, you know, they started to control this game and was pressing for the equalizer. Uh Contenders did deny Valenzuela from close range in the 30th minute before Zardes couldn't stare one in before colliding to the Riados goalkeeper in the 34th minute. Diaz then had an empty net to shoot, but unfortunately he slipped lip as he was trying to shoot that empty net and didn't make any contact to it. Uh, the broadcaster for, for this game, and by the way, this game was actually on FS2, and I believe the reason why this game was on FS2 was because FS1 was actually showing 
a a baseball game. I think it was between um oh god I, I don't know who exactly it it was again who who they were showing in a, a baseball game, but that was the reason why this game was pushed to FS2. So basically, they didn't really have the the main main FS1 guy in this game, and they only had like the the Concacaf Cap broadcaster in this game. Which unfortunately, in this case, there's only like one guy that was commentating this game, and you can clearly see he was definitely trying his best to to you know give give the the viewers a good experience. But I think he he made a mistake here. Near near the end of the half, when he kind of talked about how Caleb Porter used to live in in Monterey and actually play for Tigres, which you know when I I heard that I immediately actually checked Caleb Porter Wikipedia page because I never thought that Caleb Porter has ever played in Mexico and indeed he actually have never played in Mexico and yeah that broadcaster basically got that that facts completely wrong but I'll give him the pass because you know he was the only guy that was commentating this game and I thought the way that he commentated in this game was still 10 times better than what I hear from from the Twitter commentators commentating those those game those MLS game over Twitter but we had to have time with Monterey with a one nothing lead and then in the 49th minute heading into the second half uh there was a coming together with both of these teams because you know usually when there's an MLS and Liga MX he's kind of kind of affair there's going to be at least one time that both of these teams is going to get get into each other faces which we saw in the 49th minute then Diaz basically blasts one to, to road Z in the 51st minute uh before I kind of wrote is Columbus about to get the Atlanta United treatment where they had tons of chances in this game but they just weren't able to put one into the back of net but you know as I also kind of mentioned before anytime when I try to write notes to talk talk about how a team potentially is not going to score a goal i would say nine out of ten times the the team immediately score a goal ap after that and the one out of ten times was what happened yesterday in that atlanta versus philly game where i was hoping maybe if i wrote that on the board maybe atlanta can instantly score score a goal and get back into the game and it turns out that was not the case they actually proved me right when i wrote down they're probably not going to score a goal anymore and it turns out that was the case well for columbus they weren't were part of that and thankfully you know i guess maybe crew fan might be faking me the fact that i wrote wrote is columbus about to get the atlanta treatment and not able to score a goal because a couple of minutes after i wrote that valenzuela scores from zyarian to tie the game up at one apiece lucas zyarian was definitely a man on a mission and why wouldn't be i mean he's a former tigris player he used to play in this big big derby down down in Liga MX, he's between Rayados and Tigres, and you can clearly see he definitely had a, a point to prove in this game. And just like that, the game, of course, was tied up at one apiece. Uh, a quick note also with Zyarian, he is not going to be available in that second leg, leg game when Columbus go down to Monterey to play Rayados because he did pick up a yellow card early in this game, which is his second in yellow car of this competition and because ccl has a very strict yellow car accumulation kind of policy two yellow cards means that you are going to be suspended heading into to the next game and that of course is the case and well, we shall see whether or not if that's going to have a huge effect in terms of how columbus need to of course search for a goal to potentially win this two-legged affair but then uh bwp thought that he of course was able to score score the go ahead goal for columbus and really i think after that that equalizer the momentum was clearly with columbus and they look like they they carry that momentum to to get them themselves a second goal to lead 2-1 but then that they actually go to var to see whether or not if Josh Williams, when he feed the ball to BWP, was in an offside position. And in the end, they see that Josh Williams indeed was in an offside position. And when I saw on the replay, yeah, it clearly looked like Williams kind of leaned his, his, his body forward a little bit in an offside position. And I know I've seen that that happen before in MLS where maybe they have have a they they tend to to say that maybe that wasn't clear and obvious and in terms of being offside but here i feel like maybe this was a pretty clear and obvious the fact that when when josh william decided to lead his body to an offside position that indeed is going to be offside so that goal of course was disallowed to the dismay of the columbus crew players and also their fans but then williams hit the post in the 75th minute on the header and again columbus they were not deter determined 
with the this allow goal that they had a couple of minutes ago and they would just keep pushing for that second goal and eventually they would get it it happened in the 86th minute where Lucas Arian was able to score from Afo and Santos to tie the or to give Columbus a 2-1 lead there but then right after when they got got the lead in this game they almost conceded on the other end and they almost kind of commit a schoolboy kind of error where you know you know the old saying you're always the most vulnerable when you when you score a goal well they almost commit a mistake when on the other end Funes Mori actually went through on goal and the last guy you want want to to see a player that went through on on goal if you're a Columbus crew fan is Funes Mori but thankfully room with a big save to deny him there but then as time winding down just as you thought Columbus was going to get an advantage heading into the second leg Riados would equalize in the 93rd minute and it's Alvarado that scores from Pavone and this was definitely poor defending from the crew like the fact that they gave Alvarado space there to hit that one in I mean so far from what I've seen in in the these quarterfinal matchup I've seen some some MLS team that have really struggled in terms of defending set pieces and also defending ball coming into the box and this was a good example of it where the crew wasn't able to deal with that one and basically allow Alvaro to basically hits that one in to tie the game up at two apiece and that would be the final score of this game as the shots in this one 15 shots compared to 10 that Riados had four shots on goal compared to three that Monterey has five shots off target compared to 10 that Columbus had two shots that was blocked compared to one that Columbus had and Columbus had the better of the possession at 62% possession compared to 38% possession but at the end of the day Riados is going to have the the advantage heading into the second leg because they got that two crucial away goal and you know for Columbus it's still not the end of the world you know if they can get one down there in Mexico they can potentially move on into the next round but they got to also make sure that if they do get get one goal heading into the next round they got to not not allow Riados to get the 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 other one and and that that second leg game you know Columbus has got to either win that game or they need to have a high scoring draw because you know since Riados did get two away goal here for Columbus they need to at least win by more more than one or maybe get get a free free draw down down in Monterey if they want to move on into the next round in case if this game ends in a draw or if the next game does end in a 2-2 draw then Columbus are hoping that they can of course course a able able to win in a penalty kick shootout but as I said before they're not going to have Lucas Zarian heading into that next leg and knowing how hungry Zarian look in this game and he really kind of powered this team in terms of them coming back from a 1-0 deficit how big of a blow that is going to be for Columbus heading into the next leg well we're going to find pretty much we'll find out in in a week time when both of these teams play against each other in the second leg but now moving on into the crazy game of the night and probably the crazy game game of this tournament. I mean, you know, as I said, I don't think think this game game is is just gone through peak CONCACAF kind of Champions League level, but it just gets to a point where this game just like like the referee read for this game is just making things up as we go and of course it it isn't isn't just just full CONCACAF or gone peak CONCACAF without seeing late in this game where we actually had a bl blown call late in this game that definitely favored in favor definitely favored the Timbers in this game and how it kind of proved my point where despite the fact that VAR did implement it in the CONCACAF Champions League you do know that the same people that that is is using that VAR is the same people that have repeatedly made some blown calls before in the CONCACAF Champions League so I was definitely not surprised when I found out that yeah I knew that eventually there's going to be a case where we will have a blown call that, of course, affected the game. I mean, yesterday, technically, we saw a couple of blown calls by VAR in that Toronto versus Cruz Azul game. But this was really the first one where we saw a blown call that have really affected the, the resort of this game. But in the first half, uh, I thought the Timbers, they showed some good intensity early in this game. But unfortunately, that would would not last because Club America did start to control this game. Though neither team really created much in the opening 15 minute until in the 22nd minute, Antonella was able to deny Roger Martinez from long range as that was really the first big opportunity by either of these teams in this game. Uh, Timber seems to be going with their bread and butter in this game, which they were looking to just try to sit back and uh, 
attack on the transition and there's times where they were able to successfully do so but whenever they get on to to the final third and try to create a good final ball to create a chance to score goals that's the problem that the timbers had in the first half and pretty much was kind of the case for majority of this night uh then in the 34th minute uh the turf monster unfortunately claimed, claimed martinez as he was trying to dribble into the box and then he kind of got caught caught by the the turf monster at providence park and basically went down on the ground but then as we hit hit close to to halftime in this game there was a penalty that was given to club america after bravo brought down richard sanchez there and yeah that was clearly a penalty even though i don't think bravo actually made any contact into sanchez and maybe sanchez kind of embellished that a little bit at the end of the day when you decided to when you decided to step step in and defend their near near the the edge of the box where actually it's not even near the edge of the box but it's kind of like in the box like that yeah you're basically asking for for a defender to try to draw or even embellish a foul and that of course was the case and also that that was not a great penalty that was given away for the timbers and for for bravo because sanchez was actually facing his back toward toward goal and that he wasn't actually going even in a dangerous position to pretend Actually create a chance for Copa America to score that one so yeah the penalty of course was given they also did go to VAR to s just to make sure that that of course indeed is a penalty and indeed it is and it's Roger Martinez that steps up to take the penalty and he puts it away in the 45th minute and Club America with a one nothing lead heading into halftime and that looked like it was a killer blow for the Timbers knowing the fact that you know I don't think they play relatively well in the first half but I also didn't think Club America was really threatening in in the first half and yet somehow how Club America now is up one nothing and the Timbers are chasing the game heading into the second half now in the second half uh Darren Espria almost scored a world of a goal and probably maybe the goal of the tournament after he basically took on a couple couple of well actually he didn't took on a couple of Club America defender but he basically some somehow how got out of a situation where he was surrounded by by a a couple of club america defenders that was trying to poke the ball away and somehow he was able to escape that and trying to whip the ball into the top right corner of of the net but unfortunately that one just went went wide but you know knowing darren espria and knowing how in the last game he finally break the curse of him him able to to score a goal besides november or maybe the fact that this is a big game and you know darren espria whenever there is a big game he always tends to score an absolute world year goal so even if he does score this goal i would still say that you know since this is a big big game it's no surprise that darren Espria actually ends up on the score sheet even though technically we are not in november but i guess maybe the soccer guards just remind everyone that we're still not in november right now and Espria, besides that that one glitch in the matrix in the last game where he did score a goal against the dynamo now he's not allowed to score any more goals besides besides it the season is now in november but in the 52nd minute uh we also saw some tempers flare as there was pushing and shoving going on between both teams i mean i said before whenever there's a liga mx versus mls matchup you're going to have a tempers flare that's going to happen and ironically this temper flare kind of happened right around the same time as we saw where where tempers were starting to, to flare up in this earlier game between the columbus crew and monterey uh, Maviella then had a free header in the 59 minute that was was missed wide and you know the Timbers were really pressing for the equalizer there but you also kind of get the sense that you know is this just also another incident where the Timbers are probably not going to get get that goal because they were missing some some real good opportunity although that being said you know despite the fact that they did had had some decent opportunity the Timbers actually have not had a shot on goal up to that point and it actually took until the 72nd minute when Diego Valeri actually puts the first shot on goal for the Portland Timbers as he's tried a 25 yard free kick effort that was easily saved by by Guillermo Ochoa then in the 76th minute uh there was definitely not a good sight to see if you're a Timbers fan when Paredes had to be stretcher off what looks like a knee injury and any times when we see a Timbers player get stretched off in a knee injury usually that means it's a torn acl now i don't want to say just instantly say that paredes had a torn acl because you know we'll see see in a couple of days when they react when he get real 
when you get re-evaluated. Re re oh, God, I, didn't, I don't know why I couldn't say that word for a second. But when he does get re-evaluated to see whether or not if he did, did suffer a, a torn ACL. But, you know, again, I've seen this before where any times when a Timbers player gets stretcher off, it seems seems like, like unfortunately, they got victimized by the, the torn ACL got, gods again. And, you know, you just hope that maybe Paredes is not going to be the latest Timbers player that suffered that, that curse. But then four minutes later, uh, Ochoa was able to deny Aspria from a tight, tight angle before Roger Martinez actually gets a yellow card for descent. And that was actually his second, second in this tournament. And what's big about this is that Roger Martinez is one of their more influenced players for this Club America team. And he also was the, the only goal scorer for Club America in this game. So the fact that he's not going to be available heading into the second leg, that could be a huge advantage heading heading into the second leg for the Timbers to not have to, to deal deal with with him because he will, of course, be suspended. Uh, the CONCACAF shithousery was in full force. Well, technically, this, this shithousery kind of kind of started from minute one, but I kind of had to, to wait until maybe the 80th minute when I, I really want to write, yeah, CONCACAF shithousery is definitely gone into full force. And little do we know that for the last 10 minutes of this game, not only the fact that CONCACAF shithousery was in full force, but it might have even broken the meter in, in terms of what is is actually CONCACAF shithousery that we saw in this game. Because in the 88th minute, uh, Aquino, who looked like he actually went down with an injury, well, technically, I don't think he went down with an injury. He, he, he probably went down on the ground to try to waste some time. Now, he realized that he actually went down on the ground near near the sideline and you know when you're on the ground near the sideline you know the 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 your your medical staff can basically treat you at at the sideline and that 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 it basically doesn't have to disrupt any any times if a player does get injured on the field well i think akino probably realized that and he was kind of trying to maybe crawl himself back in place so that he, he can make sure he Sure, uh, there would be be a stoppage, and the medical team can actually treat him. And honestly, I've seen all, uh, again, I've seen a lot of crazy things that happen in Cockcap. I mean, heck, we even, as I mentioned earlier, I've seen Caleb Porritz decided to to kind of play play some checkers while he's trying to set set the the tactics of a game. But I think this is also a first where I've never seen a player decide to, to kind of use a time wasting tactics where he he goes down on the ground way too too easily on the sideline and then realize that oh i'm on the sidelines you know i can't can't stop the the play if i'm on the sideline so i decided to just kind of crawl myself back into play i mean anyway that that was kind of hilarious is to see that and as much as if you're a timbers fan seeing that has to be frustrated you can also kind, kind of acknowledge that that's kind of a smart thing to do with him trying to crawl back in, in play and decided to waste some some time and that that's probably one one the most unique way that we have ever seen before where a team decided to try to time waste. But uh, for the last couple of minutes, it was one last push for the Timbers as they were throwing the kitchen sink to try to get the equalizer. And then in the 94th minute, just as we were a couple of seconds away from the referee blowing the full-time whistle, a penalty was given for the Portland Timbers. And this was also kind of a, a messy situation where originally it looked like the penalty was given after uh, Lorea actually was brought down in, in the box by one of the Club America player. But then they, they said that the penalty was actually on Valdez. And I think, was it Jimmy Charter the one that was striking that one in? Or was it Felipe Mora that was tr trying to strike that one in? And then Valdez basically blocked that one as he was, was on the ground. But then the... The, the Timbers player immediately kind of signaled the referee that Valdez basically handballed that one as he was on the ground. And the referee basically agreed and points it to the spot. Now, they also did look at VAR to just make sure that that, of course, is, is the case. And when I look on the replay of that and also going back to the other other one that could have potentially be be a foul when Lorea was brought down by a Club America player. I thought Lorea definitely went down on the ground a little bit too easily and definitely embellished that so I don't think that was was a penalty but then when I also look at this instant when Valdez basically handballed this one as he was was on the ground it looked like the ball actually hit him in in the body instead of actually hitting his hands while he was trying to block that shot while he was laying on on the ground and 
know, we've seen before where there's been a couple of times where where VAR or a couple of times in this competition where there's been been blown handball penalty kick call that was was definitely not a penalty and it didn't hit hit a player's hand. I mean, we saw that kind of happen earlier in the Alahuense game versus Atlanta, and it seemed like we're seeing it again. And as I mentioned before, just because VAR is implemented in CCO doesn't mean mean the fact that we're still not going to see any blown call because at the end of the day, the people that is in charge of, of VAR in this competition are also the same people that have repeatedly blown blown call left and right in this competition. So yeah, the Timbers, I think they probably got away with that one and got a very fortunate call. But Felipe Mora did step up for the penalty because uh, Diego Valeri was subbed off a couple of minutes ago. Again, I just don't understand why, why Valeri sometimes get substitute off a little bit early into the game. I mean, I saw this happen in that Whitecaps game where Savarese decided to sub off Valeri, and obviously Valeri was not happy about it. This was also the same case where Valeri was definitely not happy again that he's been substitute early in this game, despite the fact that his team is down one nothing with about a couple of minutes later. But Mora basically stepped in for the penalty duty, and he was able to put that one away to tie the game up at one apiece. And yeah, that of course was the final action of what was a crazy game between the Timbers versus Club America. And the shots in this one, 10 shots compared to 11 that Club America has. 4 shots on goal compared to 6 that Club America has. Both teams had 3 shots off target. 2 shots that was blocked compared to 3 that the Timbers had. And possession-wise, possession uh, Club America had 57% possession compared to 43% possession that the Timbers had. And as much as I know the Timbers kind of celebrate wildly late in this game they got to remember that club america still has the advantage heading into the next leg because of of the away goal but again just like what i said about columbus for the timbers if they can get a goal go down in in the azteca and you know from what i heard it seems like they're gonna have no fans down down in the azteca for that second leg match and it's not going to be like this one where columbus unfortunately when they do go to monterey there are actually going to be fans in the stands for this game so maybe this could be a little bit different where i know before we've seen where teams go down to the azteca and usually they they come out out with with a loss coming out of that game but but since there is no fans in in the stands for that game maybe that put put a little bit less pressure off in ter terms of the 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 intimidation of an MLS team have to go down to the Azteca and face a very hostile kind of environment. But yeah, we shall see whether or not if the Timbers can basically basically get that that goal or even get a high score and draw to to move on into the next next round. I mean, so far I know technically after watching these first two, these two other game in the first leg of the quarterfinal, it's definitely not not a great sign seeing a lot of these MLS team unable to get the win and giving up a couple of away goals heading into the second leg. But we shall see whether or not if these MLS team can ba base, basically come go down to Mexico, which has always been a graveyard for MLS team to try to get resort. Maybe this year could be, be different if they can, of course, do so. So heading into that second leg next week. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of both of these games. And yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.